Hello, I'm Kristen Sandville, and I work for the Forest Gene Conservation Association, and we mostly work with forest practitioners to augment genetic diversity through uh, seed expertise, climate change adaptation, and species conservation programs. We also run a certified seed collector course, and we have a manual that's available for everybody, or if you're interested in taking our course, you can see us on our website at www.fgca.net. So here today to talk a little bit about tree seed, um, our woody plant seed. So we've got some vines, some shrubs, uh, and some other tree species here. So it's just the end of September, which is coming into prime seed collection season for tree species. And some of the big species that we're looking for are things like hickories, and some of our oak species. It's a little bit too early for some of these species yet, uh, so don't be fooled. Sometimes people get uh, you know, really excited when they see things like this dropping on the ground, but it's a bit too early for most of our species yet. So these are aborts. So our mother tree, for various reasons, has decided that this uh, seed is either no good or she doesn't want to put any more energy into it. So she drops it so that she can make sure she puts enough energy into the, species, to the rest of the seeds to make sure that they can become fully developed. So when we find seeds on the ground, the best way that we can determine whether it's a good seed or not is by cutting it open. So, and this is a basic seed cut test. So we cut it in half and we look inside for that tissue and we hope that that tissue color looks nice and white or creamy. There are some species that are actually different colors, but most things are gonna be nice, white, creamy colored inside. One of our other big uh, tree species that we collect coming up fairly soon is our oak species. So this is a red oak acorn. So this we can tell is getting mature. It's got nice dark, tan brown coloration. If it was really green, we generally want to avoid that. We want to make sure that it's nice and fully colored before we pick it. And again, we do that cut test. And we see some of those tissues inside look good. But if you look really closely, you can see that the inside there, down at the very bottom, is the radical or the root and that is actually brown. So this seed is no good for whatever reason. So this we, would, we know is a bad seed. So if we found a number of nuts on the ground, we wanna make sure that we cut a variety of them to make sure that we've got enough good seeds. So you wanna make sure that you cut not just one acorn or nut or other tree seed. We wanna cut several to make sure that we've got lots of good seed. Um, if most of them are really good, that makes it likely a very collectible crop. But if there's only a few that are good, we probably don't want to waste our time with that crop because there's, we're going to spend a lot of time picking up bad seeds, so we don't want to do that. An indicator, especially in oak species, is any discoloration or here where we see a small weevil hole in this acorn, that's a sign there's an insect pest in there and we definitely don't wanna pick these seeds. So when you're starting out seed picking, your best, one of your best tools is actually just your hands. There's a lot of species that you can pick just with your hands. Next most important bit is a pair of secutors or pruners, um, a jackknife, although you have to be careful when using a knife or sharp object, secutors or pruners are usually a little bit safer so between these two, you can pick most any species that you're interested in, in looking at. Another thing that is a great tool is something like a hand lens. And this allows us to take a close up look at the insides of our seed and make sure that all those tissues are healthy and good and we have good collectible seed. Now, when we actually go to pick seeds, two of our basic containers that we can go into are either plastic or paper. So for things like plums, dogwoods, some of our fleshy fruits, 
A plastic bag is good to help retain the moisture on that fleshy fruit and to help make sure that you don't end up with any leaks in, in your car along the way. Now when we're looking at things like dry fruit, things like ash species, birches, these are things that are good to go into a paper bag. Things that we are dry and we want to make sure they don't retain too much moisture because they can end up overheating and actually kill the seed. So it's really important to understand what type of bag or container you're going to put seed in when you pick. So now we've gone and we've picked our seed. So we want to make sure that it gets stored appropriately. We want to make sure that we don't leave it in direct sunlight. It needs to be out of the elements. And depending if it's a fleshy fruit, you can often store it in water and change that water daily or put it in the refrigerator um, so that you can process it right away. Fleshy fruits, you want to make sure they get processed right away because they have all those sugars and they are likely to ferment. You might end up with wine on your hands if you leave things too long. Some of our drier uh, fruits, we want to make sure they have lots of air movement and air circulation and again making sure that they're not left out in the sun or any elements because we don't want those uh, seeds to overheat. So when it comes to seeds or fruits, they, each species ripens at a different time of year and sometimes even from one side of the plant to the other side of the plant. These two uh, off the dogwoods are actually from the same plant. So you can have various ripening times even amongst the same plant, especially with shrubs and things. So the one on the right here has our ripe, nice ripe plump fruit. In our seed collection manual here, we have some examples of when things are ripening. This is a, a forecasting schedule. It tells us the periodicity, which is how frequently a tree produces seed or fruit, because not every tree or woody plant produces seed every year. And we can see here in yellow, typical flowering times. And in the red, we have some critical forecasting times. And the green is our estimated potential collection time. So it's really important to understand and get to know the species that you're working with to understand when it's an appropriate time to collect. But you also can't follow the even guidelines like this are just guidelines and you still have to get out there and cut test and look at the fruit and make sure that it's the right color, the embryo, the baby inside is fully developed. This is American Bittersweet and we've cut it in half as this is a really good example to see the internal structure of seeds. So you can see that there is six seeds within this one fruit. And we can see in the inside that little green section is the embryo or the baby seed tissue. And on the outside, we have a bit of a creamy color. That's the endosperm, which is like the lunch for that little baby. So when that baby embryo decides to emerge, that endosperm or lunch is going to feed and feed it and so that it can turn into a nice little healthy seedling. So we have species like plum, and now we want to make sure that we clean them off. These fleshy fruits, usually you can scrub them, um, peel them off, eat them, turn, make yourself some jam first before um, you can go to save the seed. So that big fleshy tissue turns into this small little seed. And inside, when we do a cut test, we see that wonderful, nice seed inside with that very hard, protective husk on the outside. So when we look up into a canopy and a tree, sometimes we can actually think there's seed on a tree. And this one, like hackberry, has a very easy time tricking you because it has these little galls on the leaves that actually look a lot like the seed. But this tree this year has no seed on it. Species like hackberry, along with most other trees, don't produce seed every year. And some of that is due to uh, climate change, 
weather patterns, insect and disease pressures, and just it's a, it takes a lot of effort for Mother Nature to put all those seeds out there, a lot of energy. So most trees can't afford to do that every year. And this is why we have to make sure that we time our seed collection and have lots of different seed collection sites. So here we have spice bush. This is a really beautiful plant, uh, typically grows in kind of moist wood settings. And you can see here, we've got some nice red berries. They start out green and it becomes really obvious on these guys when, when they're ready. You see, even from a distance, you can see that nice red color in the forest. And these are one of my favorites, even just because of the smell. So the reason that this is actually called spice bush, anybody who knows this plant uh, will know exactly why. So the fruit is very spicy and smelly and fragrant, but even actually just the stems and twigs and leaves, all parts of this plant are actually really fragrant. And the bark you can actually take off and make a tea with if you're interested in that as well some of that foraging aspect. So once we've actually, these seeds are covered in a really light fleshy fruit. So once we actually take those off and you can hand peel these off or put them in a, a pan with water and grit and mash them around with your hands, you need to be, you don't wanna to be too overly aggressive. They are fairly sensitive, delicate seed um, and they actually don't like to be dried out. So they're fairly sensitive to drying so once I've got it to a nice clean seed stage and I've cleaned everything up, rinsed it with water multiple times, made sure all that fruit was off there, I'll put it in a bag and put it in the refrigerator until I'm ready to use it. So we're out here in a restored prairie in the Long Point region. And here we have a number of American hazelnuts. So these were actually planted here by seed a number of years ago. And you can see these are nice mature um, shrubs at this point and they're producing seed. So we can see here these are still fairly green so they're not quite ready yet. We still want to wait probably a few more weeks uh, for those to be nice and fully ready. One thing when we're out here looking at trees like this is we can actually forecast some of next year's flowers. So these are male flower catkins that are gonna open up in the spring and they're filled with pollen and they will pollinate those female flowers to turn into next year's fruit. So here we're in front of another really cool plant. Uh, this is Shining Sumac. So it's, it's native to generally really sandy sites. It's far less common than its cousin, the um, staghorn sumac. So this one tends to grow usually a little bit shorter. It has really nice shiny leaves and wing stems. So really interesting detail. It has excellent fall color. Uh, it's fairly rare in the landscape. It's fairly common here in Norfolk County, the Long Point region. I already know looking at this, I can see some bad fruit, some good fruit that probably in the future in a couple of weeks or so that some of these ones we're only going to have a few that continue to develop into truly good seeds. Oh wow, these are flowering dogwood seeds. I would love to grow these in my garden. Stefan, this is a species at risk. You should never pick a species at risk unless you're part of a recovery program. Wow, I didn't know that. What else shouldn't I do, Kristen? Well, this is an also another great example. These seeds aren't even actually ready. And this is also a solitary tree. We wanna make sure that every seed we pick has really great genetics. So it's important that these trees have friends before we pick them. Thanks, Kristen. 